So welcome back everyone after a long time. Hope everyone's doing well. And uh, today I'm going to talk about partial molar property and uh, the way to determine the partial molar property with a graphical method. And the graphical method I'm going to talk about is going to be a method of tangent intercept. So before uh, finding uh, the way to determine the partial molar property, let's talk about the partial molar property itself. So to describe this, I'm going to talk about two experiments. So in the first experiment, I have uh, two beakers um, filled with uh, pure water. The first beaker has water with, with volume 20 centimeter cube, and the next one has water with uh, volume 50 centimeter cube. Now, if I add them up, the final volume is going to be 70 centimeter cube, obviously. And now, in the second experiment, I'm going to replace uh, this water with ethanol of the same volume. Now, what our intuition says is that if we add water and ethanol, then it's going to be 20 plus 50 equals 70. However, experimentally, it has been found out that uh, it's not going to be 70 centimeter cube. It's going to be less than that. It's going to be 67 centimeter cube. So why is this happening? So this is happening uh, because of the fact that water and ethanol, they act completely different when they are in presence of one, one another. So to describe this, I have an equation over here. The volume of the mixture in this case is going to be V1 plus V2. However, it does not hold true in case of mixture containing two different species. Here, this V1 with a tilde is the molar volume of the pure component of pure component, which is the water. And as we know experimentally that it does not hold true when we have water and ethanol. Now in engineering cal calculations, we want to have an equation similar to this to calculate the total volume of the mixture. In other words, we have to come up with a quantity different from this molar volume of the pure component so that so that this additive property holds. To do that, we can replace this uh, V1 with a tilde with another term, which is V1 with a bar. And if I replace this V1 and V2 with this V1 and V2, then this additive property is going to hold true. And this V1 and V2 with the bar is to what we call as the partial molar property. So V1 and V2 with a bar the partial molar property can be described as the, the volume it is going to have when it is present in a mixture. If it is in a pure component, if it's water and water, it's pure water. So it is going to assign itself this V1 volume. But if it's present in a mixture, in a mixture where the water is not present already, for example, here, if I put water and then ethanol, then it's a different mixture. They are going to interact differently. So in that case, it is going to assign, the water is going to assign itself this volume. And this volume and this volume are completely different. So this is the volume it is going to assign itself when it is in a mixture. And this volume is its volume when it is present in a pure state. So in general, if we have a k number of components, then the volume of the mixture is given by this expression. Now let's uh, talk about uh, what uh, actually partial molar property is so uh, the partial molar property or in this case the partial molar volume of component i is defined as the partial derivative of volume of the mixture with respect to number of moles of that component i by keeping temperature pressure and number of moles of all the other components except i constant for example if we have a binary system then the uh, volume, the partial molar volume of component I is going to be the partial derivative of, of uh, volume of the mixture with respect to number of moles of I by keeping the temperature, pressure and the number of moles of the component to constant. So physically uh, what it says is that it defines the rate at which this extensive property V mixture changes with the number of moles of the component component I in the mixture when the temperature, pressure and number of moles of all the other components other than I are kept constant. So 
So we can define this partial molar property not only for volume but also for other properties. So in general, this is the equation to find out the partial molar property of component I in a mixture. So now let's talk about uh, the determination of the partial molar properties. So as I said before, I'm going to talk about the method of tangent intercepts, right? So this is a widely used graphical uh, method uh, to find out the partial molar properties of both components in a binary solution. Um, so let's begin. So we know that the volume of the mixture is going to be the product of number of uh, moles present in the mixture times the molar volume of the mixture and the number of moles present in the mixture is going to be a summation of number of moles of species 1 and species 2. And as previously defined, uh, this holds this expression over here holds true for the partial molar property of species 1, partial molar volume of species 1. And by substituting this expression over here, I can get this expression. And now since both these terms they depend on number of uh, moles of species 1, we have to use the product rule of the derivative. And by using the product rule of the derivative, I end up with this. And by simplifying this expression, uh, I can get this expression over here. Now here I'm going to use the chain rule of the derivative by multiplying and dividing by the partial molar fraction of 2. Since we know that the molar fraction of species 2 is defined as the number of moles of species 2 divided by the total number of moles present in the mixture, I can substitute this x2 with, uh, with this over here and can find this derivative. So after doing some basic uh, derivative anal analysis, I can uh, end up, I will end up with minus x2 by n for the value of this partial derivative. Now if I substitute this value in this expression, I will get, uh, I will have this, I will have this expression. Now comes the fun part. Now to, now we have to suppose that the molar volume of, uh, of the mixture, it varies with the molar fraction of one of the components. So in this case, I'm assuming that the molar fraction of the mixture, it varies with the molar fraction of the component 2. And uh, now to determine the partial molar volume, we have to draw the tangent to the curve at a desired molar fraction. So my desired molar fraction is x2 and I want to find what will be the partial molar volume of component 1 and 2 if the molar fraction of species 2 is x2. So for that, I have drawn here the tangent at this point. And the slope of this tangent is basically the first derivative. So slope is going to be the, the partial derivative of this molar volume with respect to x2, which is going to be equal to minus tan theta, because I'm trying to find this, I'm trying to find this slope, and this slope is going to be equal to minus tan theta. And this minus comes here because the tangent is decreasing. And we know that the slope is rise over run. So it's BC over AC. And of course, we have the minus. Now we have to substitute this dV divided by dx2 with uh, this term in here. Now what is going to be the molar volume of the mixture? So at x2, the molar volume is going to be this intercept. So it, so it is going to be so it is going to be this. It's going to be CD. So I'm going to replace the volume of the mixture with CD. And X2, it's going to be AC. So it is going to be X2. And dV by dX2, the partial derivative, is going to be equal to minus BC by AC. So I have replaced it over here. Now these two terms are getting cancelled. So I am left out with CD plus BC. So CD plus BC is going to be BD. And if I do the same for the for the partial molar volume of component 2, I will end up with xi, xy. So what this basically says is that uh, the intercept that this tangent makes with the vertical axis at x3 equals to 1, 
gives the partial molar property or the partial molar volume of the component 2 and the intercept that this tangent makes with x3 equals to 0 gives the partial molar volume of the component 1. So the conclusion is that the intercept of a tangent at x3 equals to 0 gives the partial molar property of component 1 and the intercept that this tangent makes at x2 equals to 1 gives the partial molar property of component 2. I'm writing here partial molar property instead of partial molar volume because this method not only holds true for the volume but also can hold true for other extensive properties. For example, I'm going to give an example over here. For example, let's suppose I have another graph. I have another plot. So it varies x2. So here I have the enthalpy, the molar enthalpy of the mixture and it varies something like this. So if I want to find, so if I want to find the, the partial molar enthalpy of component 1 and 2, then what I have to do at a point x2 here, then what I can do is I can simply find a tangent at this point. Sorry, my graph is not that good. This point. So the tangent. So at x3 equals to 0, x2 is equals to 0, this is going to be the partial molar enthalpy of component 1 and this is going to be the partial molar enthalpy of component 2. So if my function varies with mole fraction of component 2, then I can graphically determine what is going to be my molar enthalpy, partial molar en enthalpy of component 1 and component 2. Here, since it's x2 is equals to 1, this is going to be a pure component 2. So this is going to be the molar volume of component 2 and since this is x2 equals to 0 here this is going to be pure component 1 so it's going to be molar enthalpy of component 1 so i hope you understood thank you for watching the video